Live from CBS4, this is your News Now. The man considered a person of interest in the case of a missing, his missing wife is now in the Hamilton County Jail. The charge is being held at at this hour. Plus, new developments in the case of a missing person that has gone missing for nearly a decade. I just hope this answers all the questions that, you know, we all have, you know, because there's a lot more questions to be answered, a lot more. Details on the arrest of a woman in North Carolina and why police think she may know what happened to a missing woman from Muncie. Good afternoon. I'm Cameron Riddle in for Ruben Diaz on this Thursday afternoon. It has been a rainy afternoon, starting to feel a little bit more like late April or late March than February, Kristen. Yeah, this kind of weather we're experiencing is more typical for that time of year, but we are going to be transitioning back into more of a wintry feel as a cold front has moved on through and those temperatures are falling. We're dealing with some very gusty winds out there and we're even under a high wind warning. That's this area here in pink. That'll last through 7 o'clock this evening with winds gusting up to 60 miles an hour possible. The rest of us under a wind advisory until that same time expiring at 7 o'clock this evening. We've had several locations reporting wind gusts over 50 miles an hour, and at this time we have winds gusting near 50 miles an hour in Indianapolis. That wind speed that gust at 48 at this time. So we're going to keep with those very windy conditions. That concern for power outages will remain on into the afternoon. We've seen some already today. Down tree limbs and some tricky travel will all be concerns. Fortunately, the rain has been easing. We still have a little bit of it out there. If few showers off on the western side of the state, but otherwise once that moves on through, we're really not looking at a whole lot more rainfall. We will be drying out as we head into your Friday, even on into the weekend as this low pressure system departs. But these temperatures certainly will be dropping to this afternoon. Here we are by four o'clock. We'll see those temperatures down into those lower 40s. And then as we head on into your Friday and into the weekend, we do get a bit of a wintry feel around. I'll let you know how far that thermometer drops and how how long it'll take to see a new warm up get in the works ahead in your full forecast. Cameron. Thank you. You were just talking about uh, all of the uh, high winds that we have and look what it has caused more than 8,000 power outages in AES's customer base across uh, central Indiana right now. Take a look that it is on your screen again. More than 8,000 customers are in the dark. We will keep you updated as soon as we know that power is restored. The man considered a person of interest in the disappearance of a Carmel woman is now back in Indiana. It comes less than a week after we learned that Xavier Breland would be extradited back to Indiana from Georgia. He's considered a person of interest in the disappearance of his wife, Sierra Breland. She hasn't been seen in almost a year. Xavier is charged with unlawful possession of a firearm by a serious violent felon. The charge stems from an incident just days after he reported his wife missing. Anyone with information on this case should contact Carmel Police. An unsolved missing persons case that started nearly 10 years ago is now crossing state lines. 27 year old Ashley Moss was last seen in Muncie in September 2013 by friends and family. No one has seen or heard from her since. Yesterday, investigators arrested 66 year old Sheila York in North Carolina. She's now facing obstruction of justice and kidnapping charges. According to court documents, York's husband, Daniel and Ashley started having an affair and got pregnant years before she disappeared. Years after she disappeared, Mullis then went Mullis and his wife, Sheila, that is, took the baby with them to Florida. Daniel died a month later and Sheila kept the baby. Ashley's father, Don, says he just wants to know what happened to his daughter. If she knows anything about my daughter's whereabouts to come forward and, and you know, be truthful about it and, you know, let me let me put my daughter to rest. Uh, you know, that's just what I need at this point. Ashley's child is now in the care of the North Carolina Department of Social Services. Meanwhile, Sheila York is facing a $100,000 bond. We are told she will be brought back here to Indiana, but it is still unclear at this time exactly when that will happen. Developing now in Howard County, the Sheriff's Office is looking for a person of interest in a death investigation. On Tuesday, 41 year old Sandra Wilson was reported missing. Investigators went to her home and found her dead. An autopsy found she had injuries consistent with physical blunt trauma. 
Her death has been ruled a homicide. The sheriff's office named her husband, Jeremy Wilson, a person of interest. Court documents show he was arrested twice last month and then bonded out of jail just days before his wife was found dead. Deputies believe he may be driving a silver 2013 Chevy Tahoe or a white 2006 Chevy Impala. If you know anything about this case, you are asked to call the Howard County Sheriff's Office. Metro Police investigates a deadly shooting on the east side. Police were called for a report of shots fired and found a man shot inside of a home on Chester Avenue Wednesday evening. He died at the scene. Authorities are asking the community to come forward and help solve this case. There's a lot of people out here, you know, watching. Please talk to the detectives. Let them know what they they see, not just today, but maybe in the last couple of days, maybe things that have led up to this incident. If you have any information on this case, call Crime Stoppers. Their number is 262 TIPS. Police have made an arrest in connection with a fire on the east side Monday. Investigators believe a house fire on Mass Ave and Rule Street was intentionally set. A firefighter was hospitalized after a serious heat related injury. He's expected to be released later this week. IMPD has not yet identified the suspect. A federal judge has dismissed a lawsuit filed by the family of Chris Beatty, who was killed during the downtown protests in 2020. Beatty was shot during a robbery. It happened at the same time as unrest in the wake of George Floyd's death. Beatty's mother, Deborah Cooper, sued the city, the mayor and IMPD. Cooper claimed the city could have done more to protect her son and others during the protest. In the decision, the judge said, quote, there is no factual allegation that supports fi any findings that the protests and Beatty's murder are connected, let alone that the crime was somehow caused by the defendants. Three people face charges for Beatty's death. Their trial is scheduled to begin next month. Indiana's Republican lawmakers want the state to pay for firearms training for teachers. The bill doesn't mandate teachers be trained or armed. It does create statewide training standards for teachers who have guns in the classroom. Advocates believe it'll make schools more secure. Opponents argue there are better ways to keep students safe. The ultimate goal would be to have such a deterrent out there that nobody ever even considers this. The way they want to defend the schools is by taking money out of other programs to protect our schools, such as having legitimate guards, having barriers, having you know, proper locking systems. The bill passed out of committee and now heads to the House floor. Two Indianapolis City County Councilors have proposed a ban on the sale of cats, dogs, and rabbits at pet shops unless the animals are from an approved shelter or rescue. Councilor John Barth says the idea is to prevent or slow what supporters call the puppy mill pipeline to pet stores. The proposal would require pet shops to only sell rescue animals to customers. They hope it will ease overcrowded shelters. Opponents insist the ban will likely push people to the black market to buy animals. The proposal now moves to the council's community affairs committee. Developing now a good update to a sad story that we've been following. A cat found with pliers in her head has been adopted. Officials say the cat was brought to the Indianapolis Animal Care Services. The shelter veterinarians provided emergency care. Now she's up eating and receiving lots of love. A member of the medical team adopted her. The search continues for the person who did this. Hamilton Southeastern schools could receive millions of dollars to help improve students' mental health. The district run, won a federal grant to boost new initiatives and hire more support staff. CBS 4's Michael Van Skoik gives us a look at the grant's goals. Good afternoon. It's a windy day across the Circle City. Last night, school board members at the Hamilton Southeastern Schools discussed a $5.7 million grant. It's received mostly positive feedback from community members, but there has been some concern from some community members and school board members, mostly about how that funding will be used. Meanwhile, there was no vote last night, just information and discussion. I spoke with district leaders earlier in the day yesterday about the grant. They say it would allow the district to recruit, hire, and better train school counselors and psychologists over the next five years. Right now, the district needs more counselors for the large amount of students it has. Most recent statewide data shows Indiana ranks last for the number of school counselors serving young students. District mental health leaders say this grant would help have a large impact on students' well-being. 
students will be healthier. Students will be better prepared for their futures. Students will be safer in the long run, because if we're able to identify kids at a young age that are struggling with issues and we're able to get them the support that they need, they may never even develop a mental illness, right? We can't prevent every student from struggling with a mental illness, but we can come alongside kids who are experiencing challenges. And this grant will really offer us that opportunity. The school board will likely discuss this grant in a future meeting, but district policy shows the board is actually required to seek as many sources of additional funding. Meanwhile, district mental health leaders plan to discuss this grant with grant organizers to answer any questions. In Hamilton County, Michael Van Skoik, CBS 4 News. Michael, thank you. Still to come, a crucial window is closing to find the survivors of the Middle East earthquakes. A look at the devastating conditions on the ground. Another major employer is making some serious job cuts. The number of people who will no longer clock in for Disney just ahead. And it's a very windy day out there. We're still under a high wind warning until 7 o'clock this evening. Winds are gusting near 50 miles an hour at this time. We've been dealing with some power outages from this already. I'll time out when we'll get back into some calmer conditions and how long we'll see more wintry weather sticking around ahead in your forecast. Theo's nose was cause for alarm, so Dad brought Puffs Plus Lotion to save it from harm. Puffs has 50% more lotion and brings soothing relief. Don't get burned by winter nose. A nose in need deserves Puffs indeed. America's number one lotion tissue. U.S. rescue teams have joined crews along the Turkish and Syrian border following this week's massive earthquakes. Workers are digging through the rubble for a fourth stray day. As Chris Zilifse reports, they are looking for any signs of life. It's been three days. The earthquake killed Abdullahi Mwani's wife and buried him alive. 72 hours fending off exposure, hypothermia, and unimaginable grief. The unseasonable cold, as much as 50 degrees lower than normal has made the catastrophe even more lethal, says the World Health Organization. We've got a lot of people who have survived 
now out in the open and in worsening and horrific conditions. We've got major disruption to fuel and electricity supplies, communication supplies, the basics of life. We are in real danger of seeing a secondary disaster which may um, caused harm to more people than the initial disaster. International relief is pouring in, including two search and rescue teams from the U.S., Ambassador Jeff Flake tells us. We also have a couple of Blackhawks to see the, the assets they have, the machinery, you know, to cut through concrete, and rebar, and the dogs uh, as well to uh, try to find uh, those survivors still there. So it's just, uh, man, when we respond, we do it well. Help that cannot come quickly enough. My mother, father, and brother are under the rubble, Salina Kamin cries. There's been no sound from them for days, none. And the cold isn't making it more difficult just for people trapped beneath the rubble. It's also making it difficult for those trying to rescue them, many of whom are victims themselves who have just lost their homes and are now using their bare hands oftentimes to look for people who might still be beneath these crumbled homes bit by bit, bucket by bucket. Chris Livesay, CBS News, Southern Turkey. The death toll from the earthquakes has now passed 19,000. That includes at least three Americans. Southwest Airlines leaders are on Capitol Hill today prepared to admit to a Senate committee that the company messed up. Less than two months ago from a winter storm, it sent the airline into a meltdown, which canceled thousands of flights and stranded passengers across the country. Chief Operating Officer Andrew Watterson has promised that an upgrade to the system is coming and has been blamed for much of the trouble. But lawmakers are prepared to grill the airline as well as the pilots union on what went wrong and how to better hold the travel industry accountable. All right, Krista. It's been a busy day. You saw Michael's hair was just out there blowing. As he said, it's a windy day in central Indiana, and it has caused some power outages. Yeah, it really is, and we're still going to be dealing with these windy conditions for a good amount of time. So we are under a high wind warning across much of central Indiana. That is here in the pink with those gusts. 50 to 60 miles an hour certainly possible. We've had several areas that have already seen winds gusting over 50 miles an hour, while the rest of us are under a wind advisory. These go until 7 o'clock this evening. At this time, winds are gusting over 40 miles an hour in Bloomington, Shelbyville, and in Kokomo, Indianapolis. For the time being, those winds have eased from our last check, where we were near 50 miles an hour, and now we are into the mid-30s. So we're going to keep these gusts around a little while longer. As Cameron mentioned, we've already seen power outages due to this, and this could could still be a concern as we head through the rest of the afternoon and into the early evening. So here are some of those peak wind gusts we've seen so far. The highest in Monroe County, very close to Whitehall, with a peak wind gust at 53 miles per hour. Kokomo, Mount Comfort, McCordsville, even Indianapolis, recording winds gusting to 52 miles an hour. Live Guardian radar, we don't have a whole lot of rain out there right now. We even broke into a good bit of sunshine in some locations, but we do have this last little wave of rain that's coming on through. It's on the lighter side and it is to the west of Marion County at this time. So we'll still see some light showers that will continue to push off to the east northeast as we head on through the afternoon as this low pressure system spins off to our north and east. So we had a cold front that moved through earlier today. It's been dropping those temperatures where we hit a high of 60 this morning. That'll continue to move on through and then later on tonight we'll have some reinforcing cold air that'll send those temperatures below freezing. So we've had a good bit of rainfall so far just for today. Since midnight, Indianapolis has picked up 0.82 inches of rainfall, almost an inch in Muncie. Then the attack on what we got yesterday, which was close to half an inch in Indianapolis, we're looking at many locations that saw over an inch from this system. So we are drying out now. Temperatures are falling. We hit 60 in Indianapolis this morning and now we are down to 51 degrees. We're still hanging on to that 60 in Muncie, but the temperatures are going to be dropping there as well. So as we get towards the late afternoon, you can expect temperatures that will have fallen much cooler down into the lower 40s. And then as we head through the overnight hours, we'll see temperatures dropping to the low 30s by tomorrow morning. Maybe a spotty shower or two on through the rest of the afternoon and then otherwise we're drying out. We are cloudy and we'll just be 
be dealing with those winds. So those winds again remain quite gusty as we head through the afternoon. That wind advisory and high wind warning goes on until 7 o'clock. And then as that secondary cold front comes on through this evening and those winds start shifting out of the northwest, they'll be dying down. But again, we'll be transitioning off to much colder temperatures. Quieter tomorrow be a little bit on the breezy side, but we'll start off with temperatures right around 30 by tomorrow morning. And just because we've had so much water come down, any of those areas we're seeing ponding that doesn't get absorbed into the surface, I do have a slight concern that could create some slick spots out there tomorrow morning as those temperatures do fall below freezing. So keep that in mind as you'll be traveling temperatures by noon in the upper 30s and we'll hover into the upper 30s on into the afternoon. The weekend isn't looking bad. We'll keep that wintry feel around for the first half of it. High of 39 is right on average for where we should be this time of year, but we're quiet and sunny as we start the weekend. Still sunny on the second half of it, but if you have any Super Bowl plans, maybe you're in a cross town, head to a friend's house. We are looking good. A high of 50 degrees on through the rest of the week into next week. We're quiet Monday, a high of 49. Tuesday and Wednesday still mild, but more showers will return. Cameron. All right, Krista, thank you. You may soon be able to stop saving up just to buy a carton of eggs. Wholesale egg prices have been dropping from their record high around the middle of December, but it may take some time for that to translate into prices at the grocery store. That's because of inflation and the concern behind the main reason that prices went up in the first place. That was a massive outbreak of the avian influenza flu, and they say it is still circulating. New today, the Walt Disney Company is the latest big name to announce layoffs. CEO Bob Iger says it will cut about 7,000 jobs as part of a, quote, significant transformation. The job cuts amount to about 3% of the media and entertainment company's global workforce. Iger, who returned as CEO in November, faces pressure to help boost the company's stock price, which has tumbled 24% in the last year. Twitter suffered a temporary glitch yesterday that left users worldwide unable to perform some of the most basic functions, including tweeting, sending direct messages, and following new accounts. CEO Elon Musk blamed the problems on multiple simultaneous internal and external issues. Some former employees have raised concerns that the mass layoffs under Musk could cause the platform to suffer after workers with knowledge of Twitter's key systems were ousted. On Sunday, millions will be watching the game and millions more will just be watching for the commercials. Find out how many companies and how much they are spending millions of dollars on ads. Waive the interest if you pay off your project in 18 months. Call West Shore Home now. Get your forecast first from Chris Wright. Weeknights on CBS4. 
Super Bowl 57 is just three days away. Millions are expected to tune in for the battle between the Chiefs and the Eagles, but some will just be there for the commercials. This year's ads features a star power from Melissa McCarthy to Miles Tiller. Companies are reportedly paying up to $7 million for a 30 second spot. Ad executives say the massive audience makes it worth the price. 100 million people. So if you look at it, break it down, seven cents a person, maybe not so bad. Some companies are getting ahead of the game and releasing their uh, videos right now. You can watch the game Sunday on our sister station, Fox 59. Krista. All right, one final check of weather here. We've already hit our high temperature of 60 this morning, and so now temperature is 51 and falling through the rest of the day. We have a high wind warning that is in place through 7 o'clock, and we will be seeing winds gusting up to 60 miles an hour possible. So still some uh, rough hours ahead. And thankfully, it is drying up. Krista, yeah, thank you so Krista. much. I'm Cameron Brittle. That is our news for now. Thanks for joining us. As McGill used to say around this time, bye. <laughs>